What's up, guys? Welcome back to the FitBiz podcast. I am here today with a very special client of ours, Michelle York. Michelle, I am, I just did the thing. So Michelle and I were just laughing about her last name and how she lives in the South and uh, in the South, it's like York. And I feel like I just did it. York. <laughs> no, you did great. Um, you did great. <laughs> well, Michelle, I, I don't always go through everybody's story, but as I was looking through the little survey we have people fill out for the podcast, your story is super interesting. And I want to read through what you shared. Maybe we can dive into some of that. Um, but mainly okay. just want to pick your brain about um, coming from like in the in-person training world, because you had a lot of clients in person prior to switching over, but you lived a whole past life prior to that too, that I didn't even, I wasn't even okay. aware of, which is really neat because I think oftentimes people come from, you know, they go to college for one thing, or they come from different backgrounds and they might have a passion or a pool to do something in the coaching space and help people. But they're like, no, no way. It's not practical. I can't just like, you know, tr switch lives and do this. And it's just really awesome to, have seen you do that. So I'm going to read through what you shared here with me. Um, so Michelle and her husband have been married for almost 25 years, which is pretty cool, a feat in itself. And they have two yes. boys who are 21 and 18 years old. Um, by trade, she was a statistician. So she had a mathematics degree. She had a mathematics degree in 1998 and was a software developer for private sector developing programs for the U.S. military and the public school system. That's all really awesome. That I had no idea. Um, it gets cooler though and more interesting. <laughs> uh, she analyzed different areas of readiness for success. After becoming a mom, she went full-time ministry. While in ministry, um, health became a real problem. She focused on or she came, had multiple autoimmune diseases, which she's still still dealing with, uh, celiacs, lupus, uh, Renaud's. What is this other one? Sorogens? Sjogren's. So Sjogren's. Never heard yeah. of that. Yeah. Interesting. So it's, it's, it's where my, I get very dry. So my mouth is very dry. You'll see I have to sip water a lot. My eyes get dry. Um, just everything dries out. It's, Got it. it's insane. Yeah. And Hashimoto's to top off the list. So a doctor told her that basically that this was just her life. She'd have to deal with the pain. I think many of us resonate with a story like that. And she decided that pretty much that's bullshit. And she took her <laughs> health into her own hands and really developed passion. Um, Michelle's a really good example of making your mess, your message. So as she started to realize that through nutrition and exercise, she could heal her body. She, she kind of said, well, what if I started doing this for other people? What if I could help other people? So now she left her other career behind and that's when she decided to become a coach and help other people like her. So she's been coaching in person and online for about 10 years, helping men and women uh, manage the effects of chronic illness and inflammation, which is yeah. so, so cool. Um, appreciate mm -hmm. you sharing all of that because I learned a lot through yeah. reading that. But okay. <laughs> let's, um, let's go back, man, to... I guess what kind of when we first met and you first joined IFCA, what did your daily work life look then? I know you're working with mostly people in person, right? I was, yes. I had a few online clients, but it, that, that wasn't really even a focus. That was just people that, you know, needed help that weren't local type thing. Um, but when I found you guys, I was actually in this place of, um, I was caring for my mother. So she's 80 years old. She went into full kidney failure. I was caring for her full time. I was training people in person at my home because, you know, of course, when COVID hit in 2020, my studio closed. And yeah. so I outfitted my garage and just brought everybody to my house. So I was training six to seven sessions a day wow. with four to six people per session. Um, so that was constant. And in between I was inside making sure mom was okay, you know, taking care Goodness. of my kids, my husband and all that stuff. Um, and I was, I was literally, I think probably going to die. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm 48 years old, but with my diseases, especially the lupus, uh -huh. I was so worn out and I had put my body under so much stress that I don't know that if in a year or so I would not have been disabled, I wouldn't have been Man. in a bed all the time. Like it, that's, how, that's where I was going. Yeah. Um, if you want to hear the funny story about how I found you guys. My yeah, husband I would love and to. I, yeah. <laughs> so we went on vacation to Mexico. So we went to an all-inclusive resort, took our kids 
And we're like, okay, we're going on this trip, but something's got to change because you are not going to survive what you're doing. Like this Mm -hmm. is not going to work. So we decided, okay, we're going to go spend 10 days at this resort. We're going to really just kind of focus on what, what do we want to do? What do we want total wellness to look like when we come back from this vacation? We knew going there that I couldn't keep doing what I was doing. And mm-hmm. we were transitioning everything online. How do you do that? Don't really know how to do it. Um, like a lot of people, we came back from Mexico with COVID. So mm. I had to cancel all my clients for another week after mm-hmm. we had just been on vacation for 10 days. And so in my bed, because I was so sick, I was lying in my bed and I was scrolling and you know how everything listens. Uh-huh. Up pops, it was a video of you talking about transitioning to online. And I was like, Oh, okay. You know, I'll, I'll get that little free resource. And then Sam reached out to me like within a day and like hooked me up with this podcast. And it was this guy who had done exactly what I wanted to do. And I was like, Oh my God, this is perfect. And so now we, here you are we, on the podcast. And full now circle. Here I am. <laughs> yep. I know. I know it was great, but it, it really was that trip to Mexico that made us really take some time off and um, figure out where we wanted this business to go. Man, that's great. That's just really good advice in general for any stage of life, any stage of business. I know Mm -hmm. um, our team always jokes anytime Jordan and I are on a vacation, they're like, get ready. Hope you get your Wheaties. Aaron and Jordan are back because we always come back with new (laughs) ideas and just recharge and ready to do it. It, It's impossible, especially when you have two kids, you're the caretaker for your mom, you have all these things going on. Mm -hmm. Um, And I guess just another little kind of thing along those lines making the choice to stay the same is still making a choice. I think oftentimes people think like, you know, I have this choice. I can move online. I can change my life or whatever, but the easier thing is just to not do anything. And they think they're not Mm -hmm. making a choice by doing that, but you are really in fact making a choice to stay the same. Um, So good for you. You know what I thought you were going to say about Mexico? I thought you were going to say we were at that resort or you looked up the hashtag and uh, we, we were there or something. Because <laughs> we, we, we go to Mexico all the time too. I was like, that's, yeah. that's the coolest way anyone's ever found yeah. us. But that's funny. No, it was just the little ears of Instagram hearing our conversations uh-huh. while we were away. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's, let's go more into that because we, we help a lot of people who are stuck in the in-person grind. They don't know how to create systems. The online sounds like a pipe dream. They could do it, but they have so many fears around it. So let's get into mm-hmm. maybe what some of your fears were. Um, and I, common ones, I don't know if you had any fear around, can I provide the same quality? Can I actually help people online? Will they actually move over to online? Will everybody jump ship? But did, did you have any of that internal dialogue going on? Absolutely. Because when I got into this, you know, I, I started my coaching business out of a full-time ministry position. So I had actually created a health ministry at the church where I worked and then just kind of carried it over into a actual functioning business that I could make money at. Uh-huh. So I got into it to help people. That was my yeah. goal in life. So my biggest fear, whenever we decided to go online is I'm going to be letting my people down mm-hmm. and they're not going to want to go with me. Um, they they already were getting a hell of a deal. I mean, right. they, they, I wasn't getting paid. Let's just, I mean, call it what it is. Um, so it was already that, are they going to, are they going to like turn their nose up at me? Or are they going to get upset with me? Are they going to quit on me? You know, mm-hmm. all the things so like, and that was my biggest fear. And it wasn't around uh, like a scarcity type mindset that like, I wasn't going to make money or, or anything like that. It was more of my people pleasing tendencies that yeah. I worried I was going to upset someone. Yeah. Yeah. So I had, to, I had to get over that quick, you know, really quickly. Yeah. Well, I'd love to have you speak to that a little bit. Cause I have this conversation mm-hmm. with people all the time and I'm like, mm-hmm. no, you can be a better online coach than in person. Have you seen that happen with your service and, oh, and how my gosh. and why kind of explain the difference if you don't yeah. mind. So when I was doing the in-person, I was basically having session after session. And so people would come, I'd have like a 15 minute break to get the the room reset. And I was basically just, okay, bye. See you later. See you next time. You know, get out. You got to go. I got (laughs) to clean and, and, you know, do all this stuff. So I wasn't spending any time with people. I certainly wasn't checking in on them outside of their sessions because I did not have time. So when I transitioned to all online and, and I am, I'm a, I don't want to sound bad. I'm an all or nothing kind of girl. So (laughs) when I transitioned, I transitioned. Yeah. So I joined IFCA in July and I told Alicia, I wanted to transition August one. And she's like, 
okay, let's go. And that's what I did. I mean, I literally, like, I got my letters, I got everything done and ready, got my systems in place, worked my butt off while still training in-person stuff to get all my systems in place so I could launch August 1st because I was ready. I knew Uh I needed to do this. So once I made that that switch, um, you know, yes, I lost about half of my in-person clients but since losing them, like a year, almost a year later at this one, not even a year later, um, mm-hmm. a lot of them have come back. So I it, told it's you okay. that was going to happen. Little, yeah. I, I remember us having this conversation. Yeah. yeah. It just takes a little time, but that's yeah. okay. But anyway, the, the point of all that. So I went to about half my clients, but all of a sudden people were having amazing results because not only was I training them for an hour, I was actually looking at what they were eating. I was looking at how they were sleeping. I was checking in on them and talking to them like a friend and a human being, which is what I wanted to do. And all that connection I had lost by doing the in-person, the the thing I so desired to do, I got it back. Yeah. The first week that I switched to online, I had it back because I had time to actually love them and, and serve them um, where I wanted, where I wanted to, where I was feeling called to. So it was yeah. huge. It was huge. And I love, I love that. I think some coaches, um, they, we get into business and business coaches are part of the problem because we're all like new clients and you know, how many, what are your sales look like and all this and all that. we kind of get away from the reason we started this in the first place, because mm-hmm. now we have a business and it's responsible for feeding our family and all this stuff. Right. Yeah. And so a lot of coaches, I think immediately slip into scarcity when they hear lose half my clients. But now I get to serve the half that stuck around better. I get them better results. Mm-hmm. I get to help them more. And you end up making more income with when it's set up appropriately. So I really, did. it's yeah. not about more people, more people, more people. How do I truly help these mm-hmm. people? Right. Yeah. And that's like every single week. It's, you know, my mindset has shift, shifted from now. Like, where can I go find more clients to, okay, how can I serve these clients? And they stick around. Because I mean, yes. so far you know, in this process, I'm not losing people. I was definitely losing more people with the Uh in-person, you know, for whatever reason. I mean, who knows why, but now when I'm serving my clients at the level, I want to be serving them, they're sticking with me. And the ones that are going are the ones who aren't really in it anyway. And that's okay. It just, it opens up a space for someone else to fill that actually wants my help and actually wants to make the change in their health and their life. Yeah. So it's, it's, it it's, takes, I don't know. I've got a whole different mindset around that. I, I was just, now. that's literally what I was just getting ready to comment on. It takes such a different mindset that mm-hmm. I don't know if you had at the start of IFCA or not really. Um, tell me a little bit about like, cause the online's new to you was so, sh- showing up on social media in this way, brand new to you. <laughs> Yes. I'm 48 <laughs> years old. I did not grow up with social media like this. And this has been one of the things that my success coach and I have had to work a lot on. And yeah. it's like, cause I'm like, people don't care what I'm doing. I don't need to post a picture. And she's like, yeah, you do. Like, <laughs> And yes, they do. So I've gotten a lot better. I'm still not great at it. Um, and my husband will call me out on it every once in a while. My husband's Trevor. He'll call me out every once in a while. I'm not great at just completely like remembering to take the pictures or post the stories or do the things. It's still sometimes an afterthought, but I'm much better than I was last July when I started this. Yeah. Um, I don't have a problem talking, obviously. <laughs> you need to start um, a podcast. <laughs> I, well, and that is on my list. So, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, that is on my list. But it's, you know, and I, I, I do enjoy talking. It's just sometimes I forget to go do it. Mm. I, I don't know. I don't know. But well, that was a huge shift. I asked about social media because, you know, you showed up and you you had a really great first successful launch. And I think that's where some of your mm-hmm. mindset of like the right people will come to me has come from, right? We need right. that evidence to show, oh, I can attract people. I can have people show up. Um, and a lot of that probably has to do with just the authority you've built over your life, right? You've had, you uh, worked in the church and you like past jobs and past connections and things like that. Is that how you found that early success past in-person clients showing up and the people who already kind of know, like, and trust you? They're yeah. like, they said, oh, wow, a new offer. I already trust Michelle. Let's go. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, all of my business so far has been built on um, just people in my life, referrals, or yeah. past clients. So I've only recently even started diving into the outreach, like, you know, ads and things like that. I've, that's like brand new in the past couple of weeks. I've even yeah. had to do that. 
So that's a new world for me, but yeah. thankfully, you know, like teaming up with you guys and partnering with you, you guys have those resources available and you're able to connect me with the people that I need to do what I need to do versus me sitting here going, all right, who do I even talk to about running right. at, you know? So you guys, you know, you, you guys have, have the resources available and that's, I mean, honestly, the Alicia is amazing. Like she's talked to me, taught me so much and she's led me through so much. The biggest piece that I've gained from being a part of IFCA, honestly, has been the resources and getting all my systems in place because I have ADHD. I can get sidetracked in a heartbeat and I'll, I'll have the whole paralysis by analysis crap, you know, uh -huh. that happens type thing. Um, but because it's laid out like, okay, well, here's your plan and here's what you do. Like, it's been the best thing for me because, you know, like then I know, okay, I got to set up this system. I got to set up this. And, oh, this is who I talked to about helping me with ads. This is who I talked to about helping me yeah. with, you know, whatever. So it's just the resources that I've been given are like invaluable. Like I can't even put a price tag on that. <laughs> well, well, thanks for that. In yeah. business, there are always so many things you can do. And the more mm -hmm. successful you get, the more things you can do, the more opportunities you're going you're gonna to see, the more ideas you're going to have. And the number one can, the number one skill of a business owner is just identifying the three foot view that we always help you guys with. Mm -hmm. All right, do these things between now mm -hmm. and the next time we talk. Um, and then just looking at a constraint and saying, is this a problem that I need to solve or just a dichotomy that needs to be managed? Is it really that important right now? Because man, on, you're right on any given day, I can just be like, oh, this seems important. That seems important. Especially mm -hmm. once you start to grow a team and they're giving their input, you want to jump all over those ideas. And yeah, yeah no, that, that's great. And, and Alicia is great. So Alicia, who she's referring to is one of our success coaches. She's built a multiple yeah. six figure business and she uh, is there for accountability and just to keep a success coach, just keep you on mm -hmm. the straight and narrow. Um, so I wanted yeah. to ask this, and you've mentioned it a couple of times with, you know, your health issues. And I know you've worked really hard on um, just feeling good and living a functional life and, you know, being about absolutely as healthy as you can be while dealing with those things, but you're still dealing with it. And you yeah. have two kids who are teenagers mm -hmm. and you're the yeah. caretaker for your mom. And now you're a business owner. Yeah, man. Um, like, I don't, I guess, I don't even know where to start with that. I just, what would you say to someone who feels like they have even one of those things where they're, they have one of those things and they're like, this would be the thing that stops you from growing a business and helping mm -hmm. people. What do you say to that person? Don't let it stop you. Every success story is different. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we will see all the time someone like we'll see, you know, an Aaron and Jordan running, you know, these, these massive coaching businesses and things like that and think, well, I can't do that because I deal with this, this, and this, mm -hmm. but I feel like such a success since last July. And I don't have a multi six figure business, but I've doubled my business yeah. since July, you know, like, or more than doubled, actually it's four times my business since July. So Amazing. like, it's, you know, every success story is different and you get to define what your success story is. So for me, you know, what success looked like for me was that I had some semblance of a life back that I was able to care for the people in my life that I am here to care for, like that I have the responsibility to care for, mm -hmm. but also be able to bring in some income for my family and do something that I love doing. Like to me, that was success. Yeah. By switching to online, now I can take my mother to every doctor's appointment she has. I Man. don't have to hire transport to get her there because I can't cancel my clients again because every time I cancel my clients, I'm not making money. Yeah. But now freedom. I can because I, you know, I don't, I'm not canceling on anybody because mm -hmm. they're fit into the pockets of my day when my coaching happens, you know? Yeah. Um, and like, I'm just up front and on and like, everybody knows like, okay, Michelle's our coach and she does this and she does this. And like, they can see that so much is possible if you just make some tweaks and changes in your life to make room for those things. So I, I hear that all the time. It, we, we hear it even with, I can't, I don't have time to get healthy because yeah. I have this, that, or the other. No, we do. We have time for the thing that we're truly passionate about. Um, but it just might not look like that other person's path and that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Like you don't have to be, you know, nose to the grindstone 24 seven and build, you know, this, this empire you can build, you know, the three-story building and be just as happy in that three-story building as the next person is in the skyscraper. So yeah. 
why would you not do it? Man, you know? I love that. This is something else we were just talking again at the, at the event that we were just at, mm -hmm. we get so caught up in the numbers and the revenue. Mm -hmm. And especially when we get caught up with more clients, it doesn't make sense because I'm like, that's not even the most efficient way to make more revenue. Right. Like you're in legacy right. now, you understand LTV and all these things, mm -hmm. keeping your clients and making them worth more, providing more value to them mm -hmm. and all those things. That's how people would rather be served. And we right. get so caught up in this rat race that forget why we got into this and in, in the in the, for in the first place is to help people and it's also for our own personal freedom so circling yeah. back and saying my goal was to be able to take my mom to her doctor's appointments and mm -hmm. you know, be there for my kids and slow down and not have to worry about my own health and all of these things mm -hmm. um, yeah. and those these massive businesses they're not built in a day I love what you said about you know I started with my network and those are the people who came to me initially and that's how we like to start businesses because it's mm -hmm. easier you're not going to take someone from a like day one if we would have said okay you're going to get really good at organic social media good luck you'll see you'll start seeing a return from that in five or six months you know because you're going to suck right. at social media at first if you haven't been on social media you're just not going to get strangers to go oh yeah me sign, like sign up here so suck for your family and friends suck for the people who already know you and now here yeah. we are you you signed on in was that july it was july yeah july so here we are almost a year later and your offer is really dialed in things are really good mm -hmm. it looks good enough to say huh let's scale this a little bit. Let's like put this message out there for more people. Let, what, what mm -hmm. could that look like? And a year from now, your mindset might be a little bit different. That's like, no, I actually want to go out for the multiple six figure business. I see it, you right. know, and I am mm -hmm. scaling it at a comfortable pace. Um, mm -hmm. but I do, you know, it's interesting. I think we throw a lot of success stories out there that are multiple six figure or seven figure businesses. And I think it almost turns people off to some extent because it just doesn't seem attainable or they just are like, oh, I don't know if that's what I want or whatever. They yeah. think that comes with less freedom. Um, but of all the people I talk to, usually they're like, I'd love to make five, six, seven, eight grand a month. Um, mm -hmm. And that's right about the range that you're in, right? You had mm -hmm. your yep. biggest month in January, which was around 8,500. Right? Yep. That's and I'm maintaining right around 8,000 a month. Yeah. Nice. I mean, yeah, that's. That's a hell of a gig for doing what you love and having the freedom. I know. Yeah. yeah. I'm, and I'm when I was so doing in you. person, it was like two, 2,000, two to 3,000 yeah. a month. And I was working my butt off. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I don't miss it. <laughs> no, I mean, you guys, you deserve all that success. I want to ask, um, what's next for you right now? I don't, I don't really even ask this for the podcast. I'm asking this like as a coaching question, what's next in front of you right now that you're afraid to do? Afraid to do? In business. I don't think I'm afraid of anything anymore. Okay. And I'm being, I'm being hundred percent honest there. Like, you know, I'm, I'm now stepping into, I've got to hire, um, a, an assistant. I need to hire, uh, you know, some, some reps, you know, some DM stuff and, um, possibly an assistant coach. I can get into the point to need that, but that doesn't scare me. It excites me. Man, like, I love it. But last July it would have scared me. Uh -huh. Like just the thought of having someone reliant on me for income would have scared me, but that doesn't scare me anymore because I know there, there's so many people who want to be helped. And there's so many people who are open to coaching and they're going to come like yeah. the right people are going to come. And there there's enough. I hear people say all the time, Oh, well, you don't want to get into that because there's too many coaches. I'm like, no, no, there's so many people on this earth who need yes. help. There's not enough coaches in all honesty. So they're going to find the coach that's is best for them. And I know that, yeah. like, I know that the people who are coming into my, my program, they're the right people for me. And if they're not, there's a coach for them. That's going to yeah. be the right person for them. And that's great. The event that we were just at, the motto was, um, one in 100 and it was a big kind of talk around the mission. And you would have loved this because it's how, how many people are sick who have lifestyle diseases mm -hmm. based yeah. off of, you know, just diet and exercise things that we can work, not maybe not to totally fix, but to manage. And, um, mm -hmm. the one in 100 is that we, we pretty much need one health coach for every 100 people on this earth because of the ob obesity mm -hmm. issues and the chronic health issues and all of this stuff. So we're not even close to that. I mean, no. out of every hundred people that follow you on social media, out of every hundred people, you know, one of them is not a health fitness coach on, on this mm -hmm. earth. So when people say it's saturated, exactly. man, that's just not true. It's not no, And, and so many people do because, you know, yes, obesity is like that huge problem, but then like the autoimmune folks like me, 
-hmm. They don't even know because doctors don't teach you that if you change how you eat and you change how you move your body, granted, this disease is not curable. There's nothing that's going to take this disease out of my body, but I can suppress it and make it like it's not even there, even though I still have it. Yeah. And that has been my focus for the past, you know, 10 years, like that I've been diagnosed even before I was diagnosed. I've just decided like, no, there's got to be a better way. Yeah. And there is. (laughs) I I personally want you to have a big business because that is, people need that so much. And that, that is pretty easy when it comes to messaging and targeting and finding the right people. And those people are in a lot Mm -hmm. of pain and they want to pay for that and they need the help. Um, so honestly, yep. it's just like the sky's the limit. How big do you want to make yeah. this thing? And yeah, well, freedom. and our goal is we want to retire Trevor. He does work in the corporate world uh-huh. still. So our goal is his retirement and we're, we're building this business a hundred percent together. So we do want the big business, but yeah. at the same time, we recognize that there are certain things that I have to deal with. And yeah. so, you know, some days my body doesn't allow me to do anything. Yesterday was actually one of those days. Yeah. I, I did nothing and you know what? It was okay. Guess what? My business still ran. Yeah. Nothing died, (laughs) you know, but I was able to take the time that my body need needed to recoup for the day. And then today I've got all this energy and I'm able to do all the things. The beauty of online. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I want to ask you about tactfully, one last thing before we wrap up is I think where a lot of people get stuck and it's super easy if they're an IFCA, because we just give them the blue, the blueprint. We're like, here, just do it Mm -hmm. like this, say it like this, record the video like this step ABC, do it where they get hung up a lot is just asking people to move online. They think mm-hmm. I could never, I don't know what that conversation would look like. And then they plan this conversation terribly. Like, do you want to move online? Well, they said, no, I already tried that. And they said, no, once it's like, yeah, of course they said, no, you, you mm-hmm. didn't say it was in your best interest. If your doctor came up to you and said, do you want to have surgery? You'd be like, no, but if no. they explain <laughs> the benefits and why you needed it and what it was going to look like on the other side and how this is the best thing for you. Um, so you just want to like, kind of run me through how that went for you and how, you know, the clients that did stay, were they excited? Were they willing to pay what mm-hmm. it was worth? Like, what did that look like? So, yeah. And, and like you said, I was given a blueprint. Like I was, I was kind of coached on how to do this. Cause if I, if I would have done it on my own, I probably just would have done scenario a, mm-hmm. that you said, which would have been like, Hey guys, okay, I'm switching to online. So who's coming, you know, yeah. it would have been something like that, but I was able to really define what I was going to be offering them first. Like that was the first step that I did was to find what I was going to offer them. And then I laid it out and I presented it to them in a way that was like, Hey, like you'd be crazy not to want to be a part yeah. of this, you know? Um, and, and of course, you know, you offer a sweet deal to your, your people, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and then the, the folks who came over, the, there was no hesitation. Like there was no, oh, you know, let me think about it. I'm not real sure about this because once they saw all the benefits they were going to get outside of what they were already getting, they, they were ready. Like Mm -hmm. there was no question about it. And honestly, the, the, (laughs) hopefully they're not listening to this podcast, but people, (laughs) people who did not transfer over, it was not a loss. And there were actually a few people that I was secretly kind of praying that they wouldn't transfer over because they were just such a drain of my energy. Yeah. Um, so the people who transferred over were the ones that I truly, truly wanted. And the ones who, who I did want, but didn't transfer over, they've already come back. Like they've already like, no, I miss you. Like I'm seeing these results that people are getting in your program now, you know, and they were all friends. So they were talking and that sort of thing. So they, they were ready to come back, but it was, I was so nervous about that process. Like that was, that's that where was everyone gets hung thing. up. Yeah. I was so scared to do it. Like, I honestly think before I actually had the call and, and put the offer out there to my people, I'm pretty sure I had a panic attack for the first time in my life. Really? Like I, I like needed a glass of wine kind uh-huh. of thing. Like I was like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this. Um, I think I cried. Like it was like, it was this whole ordeal. And then I did it and I was like, Oh my gosh, why was I so hesitant about that? Why did I put yeah. that off? Cause I think I put it off for like three days. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not ready yet. I got to wait one more day. Let me tweak this. Let me change yeah. this. You know? And my husband was like, just do it. <laughs> like, yeah. You're going to give yourself a heart attack. And it was the 
best thing I ever did. So I think sometimes, you know, it's just like jumping into the deep end of a pool for the first time. You, you know, you don't know what to expect. It's a little scary or whatever, but then once you do it, it's like, man, this is the best thing ever. And, and then you just want to keep doing it. Um, I just, if I can encourage anybody or if they're nervous about that piece of it, let that be the least nervous piece. I mean, mm-hmm. I know it's easier said than done, but honestly it is the least stressful thing out yep. of anything that I've done. I'll be honest. And yep. I made it up to be freaking Mount Everest, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was the same, same way. I started yeah. in person, moved my people online. I used that same framework when I was undercharging massively to create a new mm-hmm. offer. Yeah. So, so many times, so many pivots. And it comes from that place that you already mentioned the, the people pleaser. I don't want to let anybody down. I don't want anybody to be upset with me, but you yeah. have to frame it in your head. This is the best thing for them. Mm -hmm. They're only going to be upset because they're uncomfortable because it's changed. Nobody likes change. Nobody wants to do something else, but Hey, talk to me like a friend. You got to trust me. I've created this thing and it's great and it's going to get you better results. And it's the whole reason we're here in the first place. And we got a little off track with in person. And I never wanted to be the coach who was just like, Hey, how's your diet been? And not really getting you results, but this is the thing. Oh, and it's only this much money per month. It's less than you pay for this thing. Like all of, all of that language is included in there too, to help you really have the conversation. Mm -hmm. That is, we like to call honest persuasion thing they actually need, but you know, you can use your words and your language to get them to go. Okay. Yeah. I I trust Michelle. This sounds like a good idea. I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, Michelle. Well, thank you so much. I guess if you could leave, um, our audience with any last bit of advice, mostly fitness coaches here, specifically talking to the person who the coach who's in person and wants to go online, but is afraid for whatever reason, what would you say to them? Hmm. Stop being afraid. (laughs) Honestly, I mean, it's, it's so fun. And I know it sounds so cliche. I mean, like the biggest thing I would say to any of them is take the leap because it, as scary as it feels right now, as soon as you do it, it's like the best feeling ever. Like the feeling of freedom, the feeling of truly serving people. Like I can't, I was not there. I was so like drained and unhappy with where I was. And it was like the minute I made the decision, it just, everything just kind of started um, meshing and, and my life just seemed so much better. You know, like, it's just, it's so hard to describe but it, and it's so easy for me to say, cause I'm on the other side of the, the jump, you know, so to speak, but I'm telling you, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I say that all the time. I mean, I know I'm a smart person. I know that I have something to offer and things like that. I'm not at all degrading myself or what I have to offer, but honestly, if I can do it coming from where I came from, anybody truly can do this and just be real honest with yourself about what you want your business to look like, how you want to serve people and make that a non-negotiable. And then you're just gonna be rocking and rolling and loving it. That's awesome. Um, Michelle, you want to share uh, your social media where you hang out in case anyone wants to reach yeah. out, has any questions or anything? So on Facebook, it's, you know, facebook.com slash Michelle dot Yorick. And that's Y-O-R-I-C-K. It's a very funny spelling last name. I'm, and then on Instagram, it's at Michelle Yorick. Again, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-Y-O-R-I-C-K. That's awesome. It. Cool. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.